I'm continuing my video on the buried cities of North America. This is part 4, and it might be the last part on this topic. I won't be doing a recap of the previous episodes to keep this video short. You can watch the earlier parts on this channel, or check them out directly at falsehistory.net. The link is in the description. As I continued my search for more buried cities in the California area, I came across two more. This is from the New York Tribune on May 27, 1908. This article discusses an intriguing claim that a buried city from the Stone Age lies beneath the campus of the University of California at Berkeley. The story suggests that a group from the Berkeley Society for Psychical Research, led by Professor Joseph Farrell, found evidence of massive stone walls beneath the surface using scientific instruments. And here's another report. Tells the story of Edgar Cox, a miner, who brought back news of an astonishing discovery from the area around Lassen Buttes, California. Cox described what seemed like a buried city, hidden beneath lava fields and ancient caves. Bones, tools, and other artifacts were found, in what researchers believe might be an American version of Pompeii, an ancient civilization wiped out by a volcanic eruption. The skeletal remains were found in various poses, as if the people had been struck down suddenly in their daily lives. The tools and implements found, were unlike anything used by the local Native American tribes. And, even stranger things have been printed in national newspapers. This is from a 1934 issue of Los Angeles Times. Lizard people's catacomb found. This report, written by Jean Boskett, dives into the story of G. Warren Schufeld, a mining engineer in Los Angeles, who claimed to be hunting for a long-lost underground city, built by an ancient civilization known as the Lizard People. According to the legend, this mysterious race of advanced beings, lived 5,000 years ago, and left behind an intricate maze of tunnels, treasure, and golden tablets inscribed with their history. Schufeld believed, this subterranean world lay beneath Fort Moore Hill in downtown LA. He even used a radio X-ray device, which he claimed could detect tunnels and cavities in the ground, to locate the city. The story goes that this civilization had hidden themselves underground to escape a massive catastrophe, a tongue of fire that wiped out life on the surface. The map in the article shows how Schufelt and his crew began digging a shaft 250 feet into the ground, and he was convinced the city was hidden beneath the streets of Los Angeles, close to Sunset Boulevard and North Broadway. The diagram suggests that various rooms and tunnels were part of a once flourishing underground metropolis. And there's more in California. Quoted from an article, titled, Does Death Valley Contain a Subterranean City? The Paiute Indians have told stories about a vast underground city for centuries. They call this place the Kingdom of Shinoav, meaning ghost land, and they consider the subterranean city to be portal to the underworld. The legend of this hidden city is full of details. A retired Cincinnati physician, Dr. F. Bruce Russell, moved to the dry climate near Death Valley to try to improve his health. Joining him was a friend, Dr. Daniel S. Bovee, who had experience working at archaeological sites in Mexico. Dr. Russell and Dr. Bovee claimed to have accidentally discovered a maze of catacombs underneath the desert sands. Russell had heard of mining operations in Death Valley and decided to try his hand at unearthing riches. While sinking a mine shaft, the bottom suddenly caved in, and he found himself in a complex of tunnels. The two doctors set out to explore the tunnel system. Soon, they came upon the mummified remains of three giants, men who were reported to be between eight and nine feet tall. They were wearing odd clothing that was made from the hides of an unknown animal. Surrounding the mummies were peculiar carvings in the rock. Dr. Bovee believed that some of the carvings were Native American symbols, while others looked like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Despite their failed efforts to get archaeologists to join them in excavating the hidden city beneath Death Valley, Dr. Russell did find a group of investors willing to finance a dig. However, Russell was unable to find his way back to the mine shaft and the entrance to the underground city. He was determined to find it again. Then he disappeared, along with Dr. Bovee. Several months passed by before Russell's car was discovered broken down in a remote spot in Death Valley. In the 1920s, an old prospector named White said that he was searching for gold neath the Wingate Pass in the southwest region of Death Valley. He went into an abandoned mine shaft, and the floor of the mine gave out from his weight, plunging him into a labyrinth of underground tunnels. As he explored the tunnels, he discovered chambers that were lit with a greenish-yellow glow. 
He was unable to determine the source of the light, but he did find hundreds of mummified humans' remains, all wearing odd leather clothing. White says he made two trips back to the caverns, one with his wife, and another with his mining partner, Fred Thomason. After the old prospector's story hit the news, Tom Wilson, a paid Indian, came forward with his own tale. According to Wilson, his grandfather often spoke of finding a hidden city under Death Valley, and his account sounded similar to White's. Wilson's grandfather, he stated, had entered the tunnel system via a cave. He followed the passages for several miles, until he came upon a subterranean city, populated by a group of fair-skinned people, who wore strange leather garments, and spoke an unknown language. He claims that the entire city was illuminated by greenish-yellow lights that didn't need to be lit by fire. He also said the inhabitants of the city offered him food, the likes of which he had never seen before. When he returned to the surface to tell his tale, very few people believed him, but when Wilson heard of White's story and he noticed the similarities, he started to believe that his grandfather had found the hidden city years ago. Jack and Bill were near the Wingate Pass when one of them descended into an old mine shaft and fell through the bottom. The other immediately followed. The pair found themselves in a passageway, which they followed for more than 20 miles. Throughout the tunnel system, the two came across several chambers filled with mummified human remains, rooms filled with treasures, and tunnels lit with an odd glowing light. They described huge heavy stone doors that were perfectly balanced and would easily swing open. At some point, the tunnel started pointing upward, and Bill and Jack exited the cave system halfway up the eastern slope of the Panamint Mountains. Like the others, the two were never able to find their way back to the entrance to the hidden tunnels. The Badlands of South Dakota I didn't think them anything but weird rock formations. But from a false history perspective, they could conceivably be the result of a cataclysmic event or even a nuclear war. That's perhaps why the Native Americans called the Mako Sika, they make you sick, mistranslated as Badlands. The rocks also have that molten city feel to them, as if they had been targeted by energy weapons that can melt rock. A few examples. Google Earth High Altitude Photography, again, reveals perfectly straight lines running hundreds of miles through the landscape. Some of them have been built over by perfectly straight modern roads, others have not yet been developed. I have discussed this place in more detail in another video, you can watch it directly, the link is in the description. Conclusion While making this video, I learned that every area has legends of subterranean tunnels, cities, and secrets. Modern America was built on top of an older civilization that is different from the one we were taught there was. To reclaim our knowledge of the previous civilization, we need to start digging. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.